Hey everyone, in case you missed the announcement last week, you can now build desktop applications with PHP. Say what? So let's put it to the test and let's build a desktop application that will notify us whenever we make a sale online. Let's dive in. So let's install native PHP. I already have a Laravel application set up, which is just a plain and clean install. And let's head over to the documentation to see what is necessary in order to get native PHP working with our Laravel application. Okay, so we need PHP 8.1, Laravel 9 or higher. We need to have NPM installed. Next, we can run compose to require native PHP slash Electron. So let's do that now. Okay, that's installed. Next, we can run the install command, which will publish the native PHP service provider and bootstrap our native application. And it also published the configuration file. Would you like to install the NPM dependencies? Yes, let's do that. Okay, that's all done. So now we should be able to start up our native PHP application by running the PHP artisan native serve command. So let's give this a try. Yarn command not found. Okay. Uh, let's make sure that we have yarn installed by running the npm install yarn command. Okay, let's give it another try. Okay, it just ran the yarn command. It's now starting the Electron app. And we do get a warning. Let's take a look what this is. Unknown system error, dash 86. Okay, so I paused the video for a little bit to figure out what was going on, and it turns out that it was related to the fact that I'm running on a MacBook uh, with a M chip, so I needed to install Rosetta. So you can run this command on your Mac, software update, install Rosetta, and once you've done that, you can run PHP Artisan native serve, and now everything should work as expected. And there we go. We are now running a Laravel application inside Electron. And this is pretty neat because previously we could render uh, like our front end with React uh, or just plain HTML, but we could never ship it with like a backend framework within the application. We would have to make external calls to an API. Now we're actually running PHP inside of Electron. And that's all due to these um, compiled PHP binaries that allows you to make PHP portable and ship them with your application without having to need to install all the PHP dependencies on your machine like you normally would do with uh, Brew, for example. So as mentioned in the introduction, we're going to build a proof of concept where we have a menu bar application where we can see our most recent transactions. And at the end, we want to show some confetti as well when a new sale uh, comes in. So let's take a brief look at the documentation. Let's head over to our menu bar section and take a look. Okay, we can register our menu bar application inside the boot method of our native service provider. We can simply do menu bar create. Uh, we can turn on a doc icon. We can set a label to show some text next to the icon. We can provide a route to show a specific page to be shown inside the actual menu bar. Okay, let's, uh, let's just give it a try. Let's create our new menu bar. So let's head over to our native app service provider. Let's remove all the boilerplate that's currently there and just add our menu bar create. Make sure that we import the facade. And there we go. And you can see the application is restarting automatically whenever we make a change to the native service provider. So it should be up and running again. Uh, let's take a look. We should now see an icon in the nav bar. And there you go. There's our little icon. And when we click it, we should get our basic Laravel welcome page. And there you go. Well, that was easy. Okay, before we move on, let's install LiveWire. I'm a big fan of LiveWire, and I'm not sure if we're going to use any LiveWire functionalities, but it makes it easier to simply create a component that we can include in our menu bar. Now, while LiveWire is being installed, let's create a layout view. Whenever you use LiveWire and you use full page components, it expects a layout blade to be available. So let's create a new file and let's make sure that it's inside the layouts directory and call it app.blade. And here we're going to simply add some HTML5 boilerplate. We're going to add the LiveWire styles and LiveWire script directives. And finally, we'll add the slot where the component will be rendered. 
Now let's make sure that we also can use some CSS. So I'm going to use the play CDN by Tilman CSS. Uh, it's a little script tag we can simply add to our page and it will ensure that we can use any of the Tailwind CSS uh, classes. Okay, let's move on and let's create our first library component and let's call it Reason Transactions. Now let's jump to our web file and register our Reason Transactions route. We can simply pass the URL and we can reference the entire LiveWire component, which in this case is the Reason Transactions component. Let's switch over to our view and let's say Hello World so we can check whether the view is actually rendered inside our menu bar. Okay, let's boot up our application again and see if it works. Okay, let's try open our menu bar and we get the default welcome page. I forgot to add the route, so let's head back to our native service provider and add the route to our menu bar. Also, let's make sure that we add the name to our route. Finally, we'll launch the application again and see whether the correct route is now opened. Let's click the icon again in our menu bar. And there you go, hello world. Our component is now being rendered inside our menu bar. Okay, let's move on to the next step and let's create a new model. So let's run p3artisan make model and let's call this model transaction. I'm gonna add the dash m flag so we get a migration automatically as well. So given we want to create some new models, um, let's make sure that our models are unguarded. So let's head over to our app service provider and add model in guard. Now, while we're here, let's create a job as well. We want to have a job that is going to fetch the transactions every minute in the background and we'll store them in a the database. So let's run Peachy Artisan make job fetch transactions. So to save some time, I'm going to paste in a snippet and it's very simple. It's going to do a get request to our API endpoint. It will get the transactions, it will loop through each transaction it will check if the transaction exists based on the id and if it doesn't exist it will create it and it will store the name and the amount so let's update our migration to ensure that all the appropriate fields are there so we're going to change our id to a uuid we're going to add the name column and the amount column okay next we're going to open up our kernel and ensure that our command is running every minute so let's do schedule job and let's create a new instance of our fetch transaction show. And let's make sure that it's running every minute. Okay, to verify that our job is running and that the uh, transactions are stored in a database, we're gonna update our reason transaction component and we're gonna pass the eloquent models to our view so we can dump them and see the results. So let's start up our application again and open up our menu bar to see whether any transactions are currently there and if the transactions are being updated after a minute. So now we're gonna wait one minute because in the terminal it's gonna show you when it's running scheduled jobs. Once the scheduler has run, it should have the transactions in our database and when we open up our menu bar, the transaction should be there. So let's take a look. Okay, so as you can see, it's now saying running scheduler. Let's give it a few seconds and let's open up our app. And there you go, we get our hello world and we get a dump of our collection with our models. And there is our most recent transaction. Perfect. Let's clean up this file a little bit and let's for each, through each transaction, and let's add a placeholder in case we don't have any transactions. So let's open up our menu bar to see the changes. Um, and I did notice that in some cases when you're refreshing the nav bar or the menu bar, it doesn't always pick it up. So what you can do is move over to your application and go to view and click force reload. This often does the trick. Now I thought it would be pretty cool as well to show the total amount of transactions. So we can use the menu bar label option for this. So let's copy and paste this code and let's move over to our job to make a calculation of the sum of all transactions and show this amount whenever the job is run. So let's paste in the code, let's change this to total and finally do a little query that will sum the total amount on all transactions. So this is pretty neat because like we can reference these uh, native PHP facades anywhere, and it will just work. Um, 
So we can reference from a job, we can reference from a front end. Wherever in your application you will call any of these facade, it will trigger a response and it will update the application. So let's wait a minute for our scheduler to run and then we should see the total amount appear in our menu bar. So our scheduler has run a few times and now you can see that the total amount is now visible in our menu bar. So next up, I want to show some confetti whenever we get a new transaction. So let's move over to our fetch transaction job and let's create a new variable called new sale and let's set it to false by default. Next, we're gonna assign a model variable uh, to the transaction we've recently created and we can use a property called was recently created to check if a model was created in this life cycle. If this is the case, we're gonna set new sale to true so that at the end, whenever um, the API has sent through a bunch of transaction and it includes a new transaction, we can show the confetti. Now this confetti did have now the confetti we want to show in a new window. So let's head over to the documentation and head over to the window section and let's see how we can open up a new window. That's pretty straightforward. Window open and we can give it a width and a height. Now similar with our menu bar, we need to provide it with a route. So in this case, we need to create a new component for our uh, confetti. So let's run PHP Artisan live or make new sale. Next, we can go over to our routes file and make sure that we register a new route for our uh, new sale notification that will contain our confetti, of course. And let's make sure that we update the name of our route to new sale. Now we can head back over to our fetch transaction job and make sure that we reference our new route. Let's launch our application and let's see if it is actually opening our new newly created component. And of course, let's make sure that we add a little bit of content um, so we can verify that it is working. So now we're gonna wait a minute and there you can see this scheduler is running again. And there you go, it just opened up our new window with our notifications saying, hey, you got a new sale. Okay, let's move on to the front part, which is confetti. I want this window to be transparent. So we just get the confetti and we don't have to worry about this background color. So we can do this by calling transparent on the window object. Now when it's transparent, we also want to turn off the shadow, otherwise we'll have a transparent box with some weird shadow around it. And finally, we want to turn off the dev tools as well. Okay, now for the confetti part, we're gonna use a npm package for this. So let's head over to npmjs.com and let's search for confetti and grab the canvas confetti. Now this library can be referenced from a CDN. So let's copy and paste this and move this into our new sale blade view. And next, you can see that they also have a demo page. Uh, on this page, you can find various examples in the associated code. So let's look for one that we want to include on our sale notification. And I think like this fireworks one uh, looks pretty impressive. Uh, so let's copy and paste the code to generate this effect and move it over to our blade view as well. Now we want to make sure that our message pops a bit more as well. So we're going to wrap it in a div and make sure that it's going to be uh, fixed on our window. And we're going to make it the full width and full height and make it make and turn it into a flex box. So then we can vertically and horizontally align our message in the center of the window. We're going to wrap our message into a, a neat little div with a white background, give it some shadows, some rounded corners, and let's increase the font a bit. And of course, we're going to add some confetti emojis uh, to emphasize our new seal even more. Finally, we'll add another script tag and we're going to set a timeout. So we want this window to close automatically after, let's say, five seconds. So we can simply reference window and call the close method on it. And finally, we'll give it 5,000 milliseconds to ensure that it closes automatically after five seconds. Okay, let's put it to the test. I'm gonna trigger a new transaction. Uh, right now, the total amount of transactions is equal to 181.5. So I'm gonna 
attempt to make a new pair chase of wire elements pro that i'm selling via any stack uh, this is on a local environment so i'm going to just uh, put in my demo credentials and continue to stripe to complete this purchase so let's quickly fill out the payment credentials and click pay let's authorize this test payment and there you go our payment was verified of course there's some confetti here as well but that's not the confetti we're actually looking for um, so now we simply wait for this scheduled job to run in the background and then the total amount of transactions uh, should be updated in our menu bar and we should get a new sale notifications right in the middle of the screen with some confetti so fingers crossed that everything works Okay, so the total amount just got updated in our menu bar. And there's our still notification with our confetti. <laughs> awesome. Now it should close. Yeah, there we go. It closes automatically after five seconds. And that concludes this video. Uh, we've built a native PHP application in a couple of minutes. Um, so we get some cool desktop notifications whenever we make a new sale. I think it's pretty cool how easy it was to build something like this. Um, and given the fact that we can use PHP and Laravel, um, you should definitely give us a try. And I can't wait to see what the community is going to build, what kind of applications we'll see over the coming weeks and months. So yeah, head over to nativephp.com and try it out.